Hey, Strat fans, welcome back. And, and it's me, Colonel Strat. <coughs> We're back here with our Zatan gameplay. So, um, <coughs> I want to set the record straight with this, uh, with all, all these different campaigns I got going on. So, I know I have a lot of other ones, but I'm going to try to complete this campaign first and then go from the Warhammer campaigns and then just start doing the finishing the other campaigns too that I had started. Um, because I'm not going to leave them in the dust. So, just in case you guys were wondering, um, I am going to complete the Warhammer campaigns, this one, and the Carl Franz one, and then I'll do the other campaigns for the other older games. Um, I will continuously try to show new older games to play through um, on this <coughs> for every Friday for these Let's Plays, because I do want to show a bunch of games and have a bunch of, you know, RTS games on the channel, not just Warhammer. But Warhammer is probably one of the biggest ones, you know, because it's very popular. Anywho, let's move on from that and uh, go in and return to our Zatan gameplay. So, where we left Zatan last time, he was in a very good spot. So I added a mod called the Rail Network. So, um, let's see if I can check that out. Yeah, so the Rail Network mod... Um, I really do like the um, lore aspect of it. It's very lore friendly, and I think we have to. What we have to do to activate it is we have to like build up our points, like the Valery here, up to tier three. Now, we can do that with with a lot of labor, but uh, I don't want to rush the construction because I need the labor right now. Um, we did just beat up um, uh, what was his name, Village. Um, so. We select him pretty good. We have one um, upgrade. We have a spell resistance to our Chaos Dwarves. Alright. Well, let's start with ending the turn here. We'll go after the Foundry of Bones next so that we can, you know, continue our conquest. It's going to be interesting once we can conquer the full the full amount of the chaos waste up here because then we have to break through the bastion and that's going to take some time we don't have Zinja's teleports so that's going to be a problem breaking through we got to break through one all right so that's that's good we're making a decent amount of uh, raw materials and armaments i'm just trying to get some replenishment before i go and attack these areas Red Fortress is at 2 2. Alright, that shouldn't be tough, too difficult to beat. Let's see. Nah, let's do some military. Stockholm Syndrome. Well, all the way out to Hobgoblin Quartermaster. Alright. Yeah, we're just trying to get through here. Um, not going to be too difficult, I don't think, to take the Foundry of Bones. But, um, you know, once we get get him mopped up then uh it'll be so we get village mopped up in his little um vassal it'll be a lot easier okay so we have a convoy encounter here dueling shrine nagaron convoy the day they may have, the day may have just begun but one of the scouts has already spotted a wide flat stone platform a series of eight steps leads to an eight-sided area Deeper. Come on, kitty. Come on, kitty. Sorry, guys. Kitties like to say hi. Say hi, me. Come on. Alright. Series of eight steps leads to an eight sided area. Grooves carved in the floor to drain blood spilled. Unmistakably, this is a coronate combat shrine. The tutor troops and beat the weakness out of them. Combat drills, cost of moving this turn. Man, we don't really need it. No, no delays. Okay. Whose praise are Putra? I won't be able to reach. No, let's just keep the replenishment while I reach there. Alright. Alright, so let's build that up. That up. So gold is only used for like the minor settlement upgrades. Okay. At least that's what I've found so far. Alright. Let's see. I'll upgrade some more blender buses. We'll unlock their um, ability extra powder. 
That'd be pretty cool to, to put on. I do like that you can buff up the individual Chaos Dwarf troops. Um, it's very, um, very overpowered, I think it can become. Oh, well, there's another enemy to, to fight after this is done. I can maybe sail around there to fight him. I'd have to leave an army up here, though, to defend. So I'd have to create a lord. Yeah, that's going to be a... Not going to be too much of a problem, but, you know... Dark Elves are probably going to be harder to fight as Chaos Dwarves because of their armor piercing. So, like, my good units here are not going to be as good against the Dark Elves. Let's see. Yeah, let's do... Oh, I don't know if I can afford that. I don't know if I can afford that right now. Yeah, I'm going to be getting another one this turn, so... That's one in the foundry I'm going to make into an outpost. Give me some more slaves. There go. And let's turn it into an More slaves and more resources. I'll need that. Boundless cruelty. Yeah, let's see. Stand and die. Stand or die. Um, yeah, I'll do boundless cruelty then. And then I will do two logitician. Anothoki! Right, reforge. Infernal engineer. Okay. Hmm, that's cool. Wait a minute, let me check the reforge ability again. Restores hit points of units with the Hellforged attribute. So, like, I think this is Hellforged, right? Yeah, so it can be re renewed with that. That's pretty, pretty awesome. Alright, let's continue. Gonna be a lot of turn spamming this episode, Strat fans, just because... You know, we're getting into a good fight. We've already had the good fights in the first episode. Um, though, a fight against um, Lokir is going to be a bit challenging. I, mean, I, I guess that's the time for my orc laborers to shine, but, you know, they're probably still not going to shine that much. Alright, we got a mine shaft. That's good. He's the Kazakh monger! Is he on the Lamasu? I think he's on the Lamasu now. He was on a Great Taurus, now he's on the Lamasu. I don't know what the difference is. Lamasu better? Well, Great Taurus has more melee attack, but less speed and defense. Yeah, I think I'll let him stay on the Lamasu. They both have magical attacks, so... Oh, this is our convoy overseer. Let's upgrade his capacity and scales. Yep, there's the, uh... Ooh, there's Lokir's base. I think I could set forth off of here. I think there's a beach here, but I'm not positive. I don't think there is, actually. I don't see a beach. Yeah, yeah they really wanted to make it impossible to reach Cathay outside of the Great Bastion, which makes sense. So we gotta break through the Great Bastion to get to him, I think. Because I don't think you can get to me. Right. Uh, down, down draw of having a helmet, guys. Uh, when you have an itch and you can't scratch it. Alright, Kolek, what do you need? Sure, I'll trade with you, buddy. Yeah, always good to have a mountain god on your side. Alright going to make our way towards village's uh, dark fortress. Okay, a boom of a shoot. See, I could use more labor. Some, eh, I'll do, choose profits. I'm greedy. I'm greedy little dwarf. There he is. This village, he's back. He's back leading the hordes. There we go. Some more of that. Let's see here. I'm going to recruit this. Mm -hmm. Let's do that. 
Alright. I'm also playing with better Garrison's mod. So it should make Garrison battles more... Um... In, more challenging and intriguing to play. Both from our side and for the enemy side. Because it will buff up our Garrisons as well as the enemy Garrisons. So we'll fight better Garrisons. Oh well. You just saved me a trip. It will allow us to build up our empire and keep it more safe. Oh no. Hidden stash. Uh, he's in sorting stuff. I can't lose him right now. Astrogoth has a Tower of Tsar seat. Which one did he get? Oh, uh, okay, that's not bad. I mean, that's okay. Yeah, okay, as long as I can get the armaments one. That's all I care about. Alright, I'm way low on, on... Oh, okay, well, I'm not really low. No. They just hadn't received any. And they need it. Alright. We're good. Alrighty, I think we're all buffed up. Let's give Village one four. Oh, Valiant Defeat, huh? Hmm. Yeah, he's got a beefy garrison. Yep. But I feel like if I siege him a little bit, I'll be able to turn it into a victory. Unless he attacks me, which it will probably turn it into a victory anyway. All right. I serve only He's the got dragons. a whole peasant force. Where if I look at my garrison here, that's okay. Okay. I got a Castellan and all that. I'm right, making a lot of armaments now. Let's see what village does. If he attacks us, then um, that's a good battle. If he doesn't, then we'll just maintain siege until it becomes a little bit more runnable, and then we'll engage. Wow, it's still, it still says it's a valiant defeat. Well, I think I could pull a, um, a clutch victory out there for you guys. What do you say? Let's go for it. Yeah, let's go for it. Let's see what the terrain is. Okay. Let's get into it, strap fans. Alrighty. <sighs> Been a while since I've had a clutch battle like this. I am still very rusty with uh, the Chaos Dwarves this early in the campaign. So I might perform a little um, less than... Uh, less than... Um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? <sighs> Fuck, I... Okay, it's on the tip of my tongue, guys. Less than desired. Because I'm still trying to... Like, their dynamics with the, like, slave units. Or, my, my bad, um, unpaid intern units. Is still... It's hard for me to comprehend. Alright. Well, they're attacking me. I only have one unit that really has to be defended. And that's this rocket unit. Well, the hobgoblins are okay. I'll, I'll count them in the main force. The I care about you forces. Well, because they have such a big unit count at 140, and because they have such low leadership, meaning I know they'll come back, I'm just going to be like sending them in first, do the most damage that they can, and then like while they're distracting the enemy, like bombard them with the best streak. Um, and Zatan is going to try. We're going to try to snipe the lords with Zatan. 
I feel like that's probably the best way to do it. And we're not going to really be using magic that much. All right, let's get going. Um, and fire it will off on that. Let's see, I need you to focus. Where are those chosen? There they are. Focus on the chosen. Send these guys out. Just pick a target and go for it. Doesn't even matter if uh get those fears. Doesn't even matter if they don't fucking you know do much. It's all right. Because like I said, I'm going to do um some. Give me a burning head. Go snipe village. The drums, boys. Yeah, I could have guessed this was going to happen. Make him not move. Leave. Yeah, let's get him. There we go. Yeah, I knew that was gonna happen, that eventually they would um you know. Well but what the fuck man, he's getting away. Right. Take care of them. Move him! Yeah, take care of them. Get them out of the way. Yeah, let's get the town out of there. Send him that green. Come on, get up there. God damn it. We're off. Don't start. A Greg. Yeah, if we get Zatan back in the air, that'll work. I wanted to snipe Village, but Village made it away. Let's Alright, we're actually doing pretty good, I have to say. It's kind of take working.
they're, they're starting to rout, even though our Chaos Dwarves are starting to rout too. And that's probably because of these, uh, um, these heroes. Yeah, the fight through Zinch's barrier. Zatana Greg! Roots! Alskan! Uskazak Munger! Vajar Nachtrund! Rogigam! Quench one more! The war is here! Hashut Sarazkon! Yeah. Alright, let's get to the village. Let's snipe him. Chaos spawn are probably what's keeping the fight going. Plus these heroes. So it's gonna be a, a slog. Group them up. Oh, oh. I knew we'd lose some work laborers again, too. Come on, stop doing that. Oh god, really? Oh my god, come on, get out of there. Yeah, if we can kill those fucking heroes. Alright. Most of them are gone. Yep, I think we're barely going to pull it off, but we're going to get it. As soon as we get village dead. Yep, there he goes. Well, he's not dead, but we got it. Victory. A very Pyrrhic victory, but it's still a victory. Didn't lose any of our good units, though. If I can chase down village and kill him, that'll be good. Let's chase village down and get him dead. Alright, village. Come on. Come on, village. Bite the bullet.
If I have to do a second battle, I at least don't want village there. Come on, village, die. There we go. He's gone. It's a very Pyrrhic victory, but it's still a victory, everybody. Ooh, man. Ooh. We, we slaughtered quite a bit of them, though. Quite a bit. And Village is dead. So, we still have quite a bit remaining, and uh, it, we're, we outnumber them quite a bit as well. That's just the thing. We may not have enough to actually take the city. Or if we do, we'll lose a few units. Let's see. Let's see. Because they did attack us. So, um, their army isn't exactly wiped, I don't think. But it might be. If it's wiped completely, then I'll take it. But, I don't know. I did wipe out probably Village's army. Um, but the garrison might still remain. Either way, I'm sure that I could auto-resolve and win it. But I probably would, would lose a unit. Because they're just that low. I just hope it's not like one of my dwarf units. Because if it's one of my dwarf units then it's going to be a problem. Alright. I could use that replenishment right now, so I'll do that Alright. I think I'll find that that was a good, a good decision. Here we go. Pure, pulling a Pyrrhic victory out of a, out of a certain defeat. Alright. Brutality of Tsar. Ooh. That's good. Subjugator. The Black. Oh, he gets regeneration with the Black. General of Tsar. That's pretty cool. Haughty Resilience. Ooh, that's real cool too. Laughing Killer. Perfect Vigor. I'm going to do the Black because that gives him some ward save and regeneration. Um, let's see. Decisive. I'm not losing any, any unit. That's good because I have all that replenishment, so that's good. Alright, there we go, didn't lose a single unit and took it. Now, um, I, because both of these are that, I'm actually going to make this a, uh, a factory. You know, it should be a tower, I'm going to make it a factory. Alright, I don't need any more armament production right now. So I'm just going to build up the garrison first. I'm going to do um, Haughty Resilience and General Tsar. The General Tsar is going to help him a lot. And then the Haughty Resilience, of course, is going to buff him up a lot. So yeah, he's doing really good. He's got 21% ward save. That's really good. 25% missile resist and 25% fire resist. So the town is becoming a powerhouse. Then all terrain vehicle will do, and then um, I'm just gonna do piercing shots. Oh, co seeker, and we'll upgrade the flame storm. Alright, all right, I'm gonna be able to recruit some chaos dwarves next. Um, so I'm gonna focus on like upgrading the forge and all that. So I want to get more war machines, and I want to get uh, more warriors. Okay. Alright. Let's upgrade this. The Fortress of Eyes. Yep. The crater is almost... One well, of the crossroads is almost done. I'll spend 300 to get that. I need that extra labor. War machine graveyard. Yeah, that's pretty good. Anything that gives me armaments per turn is good. 
All right. I'll do this because I'll just give me a, a flat gold every turn. All right. So that concludes that. Now we'll do um, billowing smokestacks, and then I'm going to move Zatan back over to Cathay because that's where the big problem is going to be is Cathay. We wiped out Village, so the whole northern part here next to Cathay is secure because um, we have Kolek over here guarding our um, our west, um, and to the south is Cathay, and then the giant mountains, of course. But uh, again, Kolek is right on our border. So I feel like the Norskins and the Greenskins are going to be held back by Kolik Sun Eater. Um, because I think the Kolik actually has them as a vassal. If I'm not mistaken. Come on Kolik, I want to talk to you. Right, uh, va yes, yes, he has them as a vassal. So they are a vassal state. So technically Kolik is all of this. So he is a big buffer state. I'm going to keep him as a buffer so I can focus on Cathay. The humans of Cathay um, can be kind of difficult, especially since I think the garrison mod really buffs up the gates, if I'm not mistaken. My will does not bend. I think I am mistaken. I don't think it matters the gates. The gates were already overpowered to begin with as well. All right, so... Um, Oh, and they're getting some some gold or whatever their co their coin is. All right, we'll end a couple more turns because it is a little bit over the uh, the you know the 30 minute. That battle took a long time because again I had to really micromanage, but I think the tactic worked well. Um, like I said, I'm still learning the early game for Chaos Dwarves because they have two different styles. Oh, uh, heroic victory. Okay. Um, I don't see why it would be a victory, but okay. I'll take it. I'll take the free labor. Thank you. And I don't see why it was a victory, but I'll take it. Anyway, what I was saying before I was interrupted by Cathay, um, the Chaos Dwarves have like two different playstyles. So the first playstyle is in the early game when you have mostly you know, laborers and cheap chaff units. Um, and only a little bit select of your actually elite units that you want to keep um, alive, you want to keep those elite units in the back. Keep them in reserve and send in the chaff first to weaken and soften up the enemy. While the chaff is doing that, if you have artillery, like my Dex Shriek missile launcher, it helps a lot to have that artillery attack units, especially really high tier units that the um, chaff is engaging. Now, orc, orc laborers are probably okay chaff because they do have a damage, like a, a decent melee, melee damage stat with armor piercing. So they can help whittle down, um, like as you saw, they whittled down the Chosen quite a bit. But again, they have a very low morale, so that's why sending them way ahead like I did does help because by the time they get back to my lines and the enemy is on them, they're already rallying again to go out. So then that helps my troops because then they, my, my specialist troops, my elite troops have them as a wall, a meat shield while they're attacking. So, and then the second um, play, play style is pretty much similar to the dwarves in the late game. When you have a bunch of heavily armored chaos dwarf units, um, artillery and gunpowder units that are able to just decimate the enemy and you have a like Im immovable, immovable shield, a wall of iron. It's pretty, pretty bloody amazing to see that. Um, and they actually, I think they actually perform better than a lot of dwarfs do. And it makes it, um, it makes it very interesting because you have to choose between do t those two different playstyles. Um, especially, you know, as a tan here, you're kind of forced into that playstyle. That first playstyle, you know, in the beginning of the game. For pretty much every Chaos Dwarf, because you're not going to have a lot of Chaos Dwarves in the early game, you got to upgrade them here. So, like, as I'm upgrading and unlocking these guys here, you know, then I'm going to, you know, get some more of them here. 
and slowly replace my regular chaff units with cast work units. Alrighty. But unfortunately with that, chaff fans... Oh, well, we'll pick another convoy real quick. Um, let's see. We'll do this fella. Yeah, this fella. And we're going to go... Um, haunted Forest. Yeah. Yep, we're going to go to the Haunted Forest. And then the Master Commander, we're going to hire him. He is going to go to um, Black Crag. Alright, we're going to get a lot of laborers from that. Alright, now that that's all sorted out, we, uh, that'll be it for this, for this, um, um, next dive into the Zatan campaign. So I thank you guys for joining me, Strat fans. I hope you had a, had lots of fun sh seeing this. And, you know, like I said, I'm going to plan to complete this campaign first and then, you know, go on to the other ones. You know, just in the line and complete them all. So, you know, stick with me, Strat fans. I'll leave a like and a comment if you, if you enjoyed the video. And keep it strategic as always, Strat fans. Colonel out.